Okay. So the first objective is all about describing your current state of being. As behavior analysts, we are trained to operationally define observable or define behaviors in observable and measurable terms. This is something that is, you know, from day one in behavior analytic programs, you are, um, your goal is to be able to observe what is happening and describe it in a way that only uses the things that you can see and that you can measure and, um, to describe what is happening um, in order to objectively, um, objectively describe those things. So we're not attributing actions or thoughts or feelings to, um, to things that we can't see and that we can't measure. Um, when you, through your, all, all your training, um, I'm, I'm sure as, as it happened with mine, that, you know, this was a key concept. We cannot help the people that we serve unless we are able to clearly define what's going on that helps us to analyze those patterns of behavior, those patterns of um, stimuli, response, consequence, um, uh, patterns, and then so, so we can use that information to predict future behavior, and we can use that information to influence um, the likelihood of behavior happening or not happening in the future by making environmental manipulations. So the goal here now is to learn how to apply those, that same skill set to yourself. And it can be very difficult because that requires us to take a step outside of ourselves and really begin to think about our, um, think about ourselves from a different perspective. So you're not seeing the world um, from your thoughts, like through the lens of your thoughts, you are observing yourself, observing the world through, um, through those lenses. Um, and the more and more that you're able to do this, the more and more able, you, and in, through practice, the more fluently you will be able to notice patterns in the moment. One of the most critical and um, formative experiences in my training and um, work experience was when I was working for an organization that did a lot of parent training. And um, prior to this experience, I had worked, you know, I, I worked with some parents, but I was mostly working in schools as a direct interventionist. Um, and then I went back for my master's degree and graduated, got my BCBA. And then my first clinical job um, was all about uh, parent. It was mostly focused on parent training. And one of the things that we had to do that looking back on it was critical in the development of my skill set related to being able to take a step outside and observe my own words and actions in an objective manner was related to the, um, the things that we did within that program, which included taking video of direct sessions and then being required as part of our jobs to watch back those videos and code the data. So we weren't taking data in the moment because our focus was on naturalistic teaching opportunities. So we, you know, so we weren't collecting data in the moment. We were taking videos of our sessions. And so we were fully in the moment, engaged with the clients, engaged with the parents. And then after the fact, we would watch back the videos and score the data for, um, accurate responding, fluent responding, and procedural fidelity. And so this practice and this, these um, repeated experiences gave me an opportunity to 
physically watch myself from an outside perspective and gain skills, gain the skills of objectively describing my own actions outside of that individual context. And this was a really, really important thing um, that I would, if you, you haven't had a lot of opportunity to do this for and with yourself, I would really encourage you to consider how you could incorporate this into your daily practice or even just um, you know, uh, doing it outside of, outside of the therapeutic context um, or you know, any client context with your clients. But you know, the idea of taking videos of yourself in action and then watching them back and, and recording and um, describing what is happening is really um, can be very helpful in developing these skills. Um, as you as you gain a better sense of yourself, and as you're more readily able to fluently notice your patterns of behavior in the moment, um, it it becomes easier and easier to really drop the facade and drop that conceptualized sense of self. Um, that we you know, we tend to get wrapped up in, and that we tend that tends to cloud our vision and our ability to remain fully in the moment. Um, and you're able to you know, drop that, take a step back, look at the situation, and the, um, look at reality for what it really is. That greater sense of self awareness and greater self of you know that self ability to reflect upon your thoughts words and actions fluently in the moment allows us to more readily make those pivots in the moment and so that this is this is why practicing these skills outside of the context in which they're needed is really important to developing this skill set just like when we're working with with the individuals on our caseload and our client list, we are in court, you know, we're teaching them, we're modeling the skills, we're giving the opportunities to practice, we're reinforcing, and we do that over and over and over again until a skill is mastered. And so my, my push always is for to think about how that same pattern and that same process applies to yourself because it does um but but because we get so wrapped up and so fused with our conceptualized sense of self it because it can be difficult to break that pattern and break that cycle um, without specific practice um, um, engaging in those in that in those patterns or in those actions repeatedly so there are there are two exercises related to this objective that I am going to talk about you know, what the what the expectations are, as well as provide an, provide my examples of completing these exercises. If you um, if you would like to share out, please uh, you can put something in the chat box that you have something to say. I see that there have been already some things shared out. Um, which is wonderful, and I'm really excited to um, continue to continue this conversation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the go through the exercises, and then we'll take a moment to um, follow up and give you all an opportunity to respond, and we'll uh, be able to share out. So the first exercise is um, titled "I Feel I Am," and this is this exercise is based on one that is in the Liberated Mind book, the, the I am, I am not exercise. Um, and so what this exercise asks us to do is to bring to mind our three goals that we, that we have defined and are working on. Um, and the goal is to learn how to more objectively describe yourself. Um, and so when, you know, when somebody asks you, you know, who are you or what do you do? It's the, the automatic more, you know, the easily practiced response are typically those short, sweet, to the point, I am blank. Those statements that, ease, that readily come to mind and are your fluent responses tend to be the ones that you identify with 
the most, but not necessarily the ones that are the most helpful when it comes to living in living fully in accordance with your values and, and consistently acting in the service of your values. And so this exercise you know, asks us to expand upon our descriptions of ourselves beyond the simple I am to, um, to actually describe um, your, uh, describe the goal and the sit and your feelings and situations and uh, in which this goal and and skills are being used or not used. So, uh, so for my three goals, I you know my three goals are related to standing up for myself and others, making meaningful contact with joy, and setting realistic boundaries. And so, um. You know, my simple statement might be, I stand up for myself with other, I stand up for myself and others. And I, um, I make meaningful contact with joy or I set realistic boundaries. That is what I want to do. That is what I strive to do. But to, in order to describe my current state of being, I need to expand that to you know, really describe situations in which I am and I am not exemplifying that behavior and real and and really considering the um, collateral thoughts and feelings that um, either exhibiting those behaviors or not exhibiting those behaviors evoke within myself as my internal responses and so my two statements in, re in regard to standing up for myself and others are that um, you know in the past when I have, when I have observed a child being mistreated, and I predict that that continuation of that treatment will lead to poor outcomes, and I don't speak up. So when I see that happening, and I make that prediction based on my my history and knowledge, and I don't say something, and I don't do something, I don't take action, I feel ashamed about that because that is not consistent with who I am and what I'm about as a person. But it does happen. In regard to something that I do feel like, you know, that I, when I am living in accordance with this value, these values, this value and this goal, and when I am acting would be in relation to when I hear of something said that was untrue and I stand up and I stand up and I speak up and I correct the record, I feel proud and I feel very empowered because I am advocating. I'm not just taking, uh, you know, I'm not just letting things go when they shouldn't be let go. If something is being done or said that is wrong, that I know is wrong and that I have the power to influence in any way, when I stand up and speak up, I feel stronger, and that actually um, reinforces and makes that behavior more likely in the future. In regarding to in regard to making meaningful meaningful contact with joy, my current state um, is you know, more in the in line with the the first one, and this is where I you know I I tend to have more um, thought pain and suffering related to this goal area. Um, so my, you know, a common pattern is that when I'm invited to a social function, um, I find excuses or I make excuses not to go and not to be involved. And they generally have to do with, you know, I'm too busy, I've got this to do, I've got all these obligations, I wear all these hats, and so I don't have, you know, I don't have time for fun, I don't have time for that, I need to blank instead. Um, but the problem is, is that when I get invited to social functions and I make excuses not to go, I feel sad and I feel resentful because I, you know, I, I end up kicking myself for not taking the opportunity to experience joy um, and take that, you know, whatever, it's a couple hours out of my day or, you know, or a couple hours out of my week that could have been dedicated to something that is, you know, life-affirming and life. Um, 
On the other hand, so when I when I notice it's a friend's birthday, I get the Facebook pop-up or I get a calendar reminder and I call them to wish them a happy birthday and I make, take, make that effort to, um, take, uh, to create that social connection, I feel really joyous and happy. It reaffirms, it reinforces that pattern of behavior and I want to do it again. It doesn't mean that I always do. I don't always live in accordance with that. But that's what I really want to make a part of my uh, a part of my regular actions. In regard to setting realistic boundaries, um, when I when I take on um, a lot of side jobs or a lot of side commitments which conflict with my obligations, without evaluating first what it is that I have going on to make sure that I you know, can stay fully in, in balance. I tend to fail to meet expectations, um, and then I feel a deep sense of shame related to not living up to those expectations. On the other side, when I do evaluate my obligations and um, say no when it's needed, I feel much stronger, and I feel much more balanced, and I feel much more in control of and so, you know, sometimes I, you know, fall into the trap of, you know, committing to things that um, are beyond my human capacity. Frequently relate, frequently leads to kind of, you know, feeling as though I'm you know, missing or that I'm not doing things that I said I would, and that causes, you know, that causes me to feel a deep sense of shame and have thoughts related to you know, um, like that self. Uh, self-hate that um, kind of is a, a pervasive kind of pervasive feeling that impacts our impacts my life. So then the second exercise underneath this objective is to is called ready to earn it. And so this is a, this is one that's based on the um, third yellow ball um, strategy within the um, flip the script book. And so this exercise asks you to really, so to can go back, consider your three goals and really try to answer the question, are you ready to earn it? Are you ready to, this goal that you have, are you ready to earn it? Are you ready to do what's necessary to bring that goal to true to fruition. Um, you know, we have this, we have this idea that big goals somehow are easy to achieve. You know, we're we're smart, capable, well-trained people, and I should just be able to, you know, say I'm gonna do something and do it. But the reality is is that we're all human. Um, yes, we would all like to be successful, yes, we would all like to achieve our goals in a snap of a finger, but there's no magic wand. There's no simple solutions. It's not easy. Things don't happen overnight. And many times the things that end up happening overnight, um, and you know, they happen really quickly and with, with little effort. A lot of times what happens is that, you know, you get to the top of that mountain and realize that the foundation on which those successes are built are not strong. There's holes in the concrete and it's easy to crumble. Um, and you know, we, you know, that is something that I, that I feel has, you know, throughout my career, has been something that I've struggled with because I've pushed to you know, go harder and go faster and push as hard as I can and fight, you know, fight, fight, fight to get to the top without necessarily understanding that, you know, I, while I, you know, I had a foundation on which I was building, on which I could stand, it wasn't, it wasn't an impenetrable foundation. And so this, um, this exercise really tries to get to that idea of what are you, you know, what are you willing to do and what can you do to strengthen that foundation and strengthen that core and do the work necessary to make your rise to the top and make your achievement of that goal stick. Um, so in relation to your goals, the exercise asks you to 
answer the question. Are you earning extraordinary in regard to your goals? And if not, what can you do to fix it? What shifts can you make in your behavior? Because if you're not earning extraordinary, that's fine. You're, nobody can be extraordinary all the time. Nobody can you know, be everything all at once, all of the time. But if it's really important to you, if it's a goal that matters, then it, you know, it should be that you are able to um, identify what those, what are those small shifts? What are those things that you can do to nudge yourself in the right direction and make it, make that shift from this current trajectory where, you know, you're going in the right direction and you're making progress, but maybe not as rapidly as you want. Um, and so, you know, there are, there are, it's very likely that there's a small shift, a small change that you can make that will help you start taking bigger and bigger steps and take that trajectory line on your goals from, you know, a, you know, a, 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 a progress line, but not necessarily um, in a man, in a uh, timely manner that is going to help you reach your goals in the uh, in on the timeline that you would really want to. So, what are what are you going to do? What how are you going to flip the script on easy and instant and really earn extraordinary, earn your goals? So for myself. Um, the, uh, I, you know, I took time to reflect upon whether or not, I, you know, what am I doing? Am I taking the steps? Am I earning it? Am I, you know, am I doing what's necessary to be extraordinary or am I falling in back into old habits and, um, maintaining, which are only going to serve to maintain the status quo. And so in relation to my group and my three goals, I, went through this process and thought about what, how I would answer for myself. So in relation to standing up for myself and others, I do feel like I'm making progress, but it's really hard. Um, and what I find to be really difficult, especially in my current position, is to create that balance or maintain that balance between um, advocating and doing what's necessary um, to make the changes in my environment that I feel are appropriate um, and then also maintaining the boundaries of my scope the scope of my job and the scope of my practice um, because I you know my current position isn't one where I'm in charge anymore and so that conceptualized sense of myself where you know I am you know, I am a behavior analyst I'm a clinical director I'm the one who's leading the charge and who's setting the stage and who is, you know, the one who's influencing the direction, that's not the position that I'm in, in anymore. So in, my, in the current environment in which I live and the job that I'm working at, I am a um, temporary sub teacher and which, you know, which is a job that I can do, but there's so many things within that environment that my, you know, my problem solving brain goes into high alert mode and I want you know it's like oh that's a problem that needs to be fixed that's a problem that needs to be fixed and you know I, I get so tied to this idea that you know I have all this knowledge, all this knowledge and all these skills that I could you know I can really help influence the trajectory of this of, of what's happening here um, but being able to maintain that balance and still earn the, you know, still earn the right to be extraordinary, still earn the right to stand up for myself and others, but in a way that is going to be a good contextual fit and, and um, produce the outcomes that I, that I am striving for is a difficult balance to maintain. And it is, it is taking a lot of um, effort for me to really hone in on I, you know, analyzing the problems, analyzing them thoroughly, and taking a step back so I'm not, you know, I'm not overstepping my boundaries, but I am advocating in a way that has the most likelihood to produce outcomes. And so, you know, gathering information, making observations, coming up with thought, coming up with ideas and potential solutions, and then 
um, you know, the, the pivot that and the small behavior changes that I'm trying to make is rather than, you know, full force trying to address all those problems all at once is to prepare, narrow things down into kind of, um, kind of high priority actions that could be taken and talking to the importance of the stakeholders in a private way um, rather than on the fly. So I can get my message across and I can advocate, but in a way that is most likely to be effective and, and um, accepted by the other stakeholders who are um, concerned who are involved in the environment in which I'm working. Um, the, second, you know, the second goal related to mean, making meaningful contact with joy, am I earning this? Am I earning an extraordinary? Um, sort of, I'm making, it's a work in progress. This one is really, this one again is very difficult for me because I have the sense of duty and the sense of obligation that I, you know, I've made these commitments. I, I have a clear plan of what I want to do and who I want to be. Um, but I also understand now that if I don't take time to, um, to enjoy life and take opportunities to be with friends, if, I, you know, if I'm constantly avoiding joy, um, that drains my energy. And when I take the time and I let go of all of the, you know, should I have to all I let go of all of the have to do's and realize that you know, what I have to do right now in order to maintain balance and maintain a an ability to steadily maintain progress, um, I need to take time to experience joy. I get energy from those experiences. It you know allows me to you know reset and come back to the more difficult tasks with a sense of more motivation and more energy because I've taken that time to take care of myself. Um, so one of the small things that I've um, more recently introduced is um, taking time out of my day um, to play the piano. So I have this goal. I really want, I have a set of songs that I want to learn and that I have been practicing. And my goal is to, by the end of the year, be at a point where I can enter into the, um, every year our school, school district has a talent show. And so my goal is I want to get to the point where I could play one song. And the only way that I'm going to get there is by practicing. And luckily at the school at which I work, there's a really nice piano in one of my classrooms. And so you know, I've been you know, going to work about 15 minutes early just so I have time to play the piano for 15 minutes before I get started with my day. And it has been a, such a wonderful way to start my day um, because it's that, you know, that positive focus. Like, you know, going to the school and rather than just jumping right in and getting, you know, getting my last lesson plans out and getting materials out and getting ready to go, you know, switch that, switch that pattern, just make it a tiny little shift um, to do something that brings me joy and you know, reassociate that, re, you know, reconnects that joy with, um, with a more challenging environment, um, which has been really helpful because I'm taking time to contact that joy within my day, the beginning of it. Um, in regard to setting realistic boundaries, this is something that I have struggled with my whole entire life, um, and it is a big challenge for me. Um, again, because I have you know, have all of this passion and I have all of this energy and I want to do all of these things and I see all of these issues, and I you know I can um, see I can you know see what the things that could would help in the situation, and you know don't see anybody else being able to, or you know stepping in and taking action. And so, okay, well, if nobody else is going to do it, well, I guess, I guess I've got to, I guess I've, you know, and so I find myself jumping in and committing and wanting to you know, be everything to everybody at all times. Problem that this causes is that I end up spending less time with my family, which really, cre you know, creates an, an imbalance within my own life because I love my family. I want to spend time 
um, just you know, being with them and sort of feeling that, you know, feeling that joy and the, um, the positivity that comes from those experiences. Um, and so one, one of the strategies that I have really started to um, try to make, you know, make a shift towards is um, when I find myself at a position and a point in my life where I am feeling imbalanced or I'm feeling like I'm struggling to get things done or, you know, I've overcommitted and I'm missing deadlines, you know, my, sometimes my tendency is to, you know, want to go bury my head in the sand um but you know that the action that i'm willing to take to earn extraordinary in regard to this goal is to set up times to meet with those key stakeholders redefine and reclarify roles and responsibilities and expectations and boundaries to ensure that everybody's all on the same page again um, because this is, you know, this is a this is a pattern behavior that can easily get out of control um, because you know things keep piling and piling on and taking on more responsibilities. And as you know, as I become more spread thin, um, it's harder for me to accomplish my goals, and it's easier to let let that sense of overwhelm take over. Um, which is, you know, if I want to meet this goal. I, you know, I have to do something differently in order to change that trajectory. So I would like to um, open up to anyone who would like to share their thoughts related to either defining your current state of being using this, you know, model of I feel I am, which is, you know, when in this situation and I do this, I feel this way. Um, so if anybody wants to practice talking about things in that way, we'd love to, I'd love to hear it. Um, and then also, if you would like to share your thoughts about what you're currently doing to actively earn extraordinary in regard to your goals and those small changes that you are, that you are making or are willing to make um, to your uh, to your day-to-day -day activities or actions to close the gap on your goals. Um, it would be good, good to hear that. So I will pause my speaking and I'm going to um, open it up to anybody who would like to share. So I was just looking back at the chat and uh, Mary had said or had resonated the idea of using the videos to provide feedback to staff and to herself. Um, she thought that would, would be a helpful, a helpful strategy, which I am I'm glad that you really like that you like that. Because that is something that you know I I've tried to encourage people to do. And they're learning new skills, um, but it can, you know, it can be overwhelming because we have this, or, you know, I do, or previous, I, previously I've had this feeling like I don't, you know, I don't want to be in video, I don't want to hear myself, I don't want to see myself. It's hard to, um, it's hard to do those things, and and uh, you know, it can feel. A little embarrassing um, when you do it, but it, it can be a very, very powerful strategy to help develop skills and develop um, fluency in um, identifying patterns of behavior in yourself. Okay, I think I'll try to share a little bit. Um, <laughs> I guess one of my my goals that I really want to focus on right now is refinding my confidence. It's kind of like whenever I make a professional decision, 
I question myself just over and over and over again in my head. Oftentimes I talk myself out of saying something, you know, and uh, I've jumped around in roles lately. So, you know, I went from school setting to clinical setting back to school setting and I was an administrator and now I'm back in the classroom and I love it. Like absolutely love my job. But now it's like, am I doing the right thing? Is this decision worth it? And all that fun stuff. So a lot of circular thought. Um, so my goal is to be more confident in my decisions because I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and even though my brain Wanda decides that, you know, it's, you know, it's not true, whatever. <laughs> but I'm going to be more like, I don't know, not really forceful, but just more confident whenever I set a, a non-negotiable decision. It's like, no, today we are going to do this because it is outlined in our curriculum. And, you know, we can talk about another plan for an activity tomorrow, but this is what we're doing. Um, but really being respectful in that communication too, because I value teamwork and insight and including other people's opinions, but there's also times where we can't sway from the plan. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I really like that, how you conceptualized, um, that for yourself and to share with us because it it can be it become it can become really difficult when especially when you're in a new situation to not second guess yourself um you know i, I have i have that same tendency where it's like no i know like i know what i want to happen i know what this should look like and i'm you know i'm putting it out i'm putting it all out there and i'm you know setting my expectations but then the moment that there's like question or concern or, you know, somebody has a different idea or, you know, doesn't, doesn't really buy in, they don't think it's going to work. You know, I, I find myself, you know, kind of like, you're, it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to backpedal or I'm just going to, I'm just going to let it go. And okay, well, maybe we're not ready for this change. Um, and so, but you, you know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about and you, what the suggestion that you're making and the, um, activities that you have planned and the goals that you have are, you know, they're founded in the science of behavior. And you know that it is like, when we do this with fidelity, it is going to work. And so I just, you know, being able to you know, gather your confidence and gather your, um, you know, your gumption to say, thank you, you know, thank you, Wanda. And thank you, anybody else who has, you know, has alternative ideas about what you know, how we could modify this for, you know, for our students or this environment, you know, I appreciate your input and I will, you know, and we'll, but we're going to table that for now. We're going to, I'm going to take your input and I'm going to hold on to it because your, your opinion and your thoughts about this matter are important, but we're still going to do this. We're going to give this a try because I put a lot of thought and I put a lot of effort into making this plan. And so, thank you, I appreciate that, but we're still going to, we're still gonna give this the you know, full effort um, before we make any changes. And so, you know, being able to, being able, having that confidence to, to do that um, in the moment can be really challenging. So, um, I, you know, it sounds like you might be thinking about ways that you could practice this outside of the moment, you know, when confronted with that, you know, the naysayer, how could you, you know, keep your shoulders back and down, don't get your, don't get all defensive. Um, how can you, you know, really still communicate clearly and concisely in a caring and compassionate way, um, but not let, but not back down from your decision. Is yeah, exactly. And you know, I have this amazing team of paraprofessionals. I love each and every one of them to death, but it's sometimes it's like five to one. And being the new person and not having worked with the kids for as long, they're like, but we know the kids better. And I'm like, I know you do. And I'm so glad you're here. And I'm thankful that you're here. But, you know, 
we have to change what we're doing. Let's try this. Let's do this. Let's step outside of that comfort zone together. And then we're piloting a new program this year. So then that leaves everybody kind of up in arms. Like, why do we have to change this? It's been so good, but you know, it's, it's just trying to create that sense of team and then still, you know, there are those times where, yeah, we, we have to move forward in this set direction, but thanks. Come on board. Let's do it together. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I, I definitely feel you on that. I feel like I'm in a very similar situation where, you know, it's, I see all these things that need, you know, that need to happen. Um, but still, you know, finding that balance between pushing too hard and too fast, where, you know, you might lose some people along the way and then but still having high expectations and we're still moving forward, we're still making changes still responding to the data um, can be, it can be a challenge, but um, I'm excited to hear, yeah, I'm excited to hear how you uh, continue to push through that and work through those, work through those challenges, which can, which can be difficult, but once you, you know, once you kind of get, gain your stride, um, it can be very, you know, it, it will be very empowering to you. 